Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality, again in our pandemic form, uh, coming to you from the actual centre, the Centre Chapel, and John and Virginia are not with me because we are trying to live up to the lockdown, which we are all experiencing at this time. I'd like to invite you to listen to the um, uh, Gospel that comes from the sixth Sunday after Easter. And I have to admit I'm going to cheat. I'm going to add two verses at the end that come uh, and I think really are needed to explain the Gospel as we have it in the liturgy of the Church. So I invite you now to listen. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not you leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who, who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas not Iscariot said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Perhaps I might start with why I've added those extra verses. Let me just read the verse that I added. Um, I love those I'm sorry those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them I want to focus on the word home you might remember that last week the gospel began in my father's house there are many mansions mansions, home dwelling place, abode. In the Greek, it's the same word. In other words, in the beginning, Jesus is saying, I'm going away because there's plenty of abodes in my Father's house, and I'll come back. Here he is saying, if you love me, the Father and I will come and we will make our abode with you. In other words, Jesus and the Father are coming to live within us. The very next chapter, part of this first discourse is the vine and the branches. And Jesus talks about the fact that, um, um, that we need to abide with him. So the abodes here, the two words only used here in the scriptures, it's a play on words, combined with what's to follow with that word abide, which is a key to John, is bringing out the union that we have with the Lord. So in this section, we're not focusing so much on Jesus and the Father, we're focusing on the fact of Jesus and the Father and us. I am in the Father, I, you in me, and I in you. In other words, we are drawn in to the life of the Father through Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So it's that union with Jesus which is at the very heart of our Christian life that draws us to share um, in the life of the Godhead, which is really what the good news is about. However, the main focus perhaps um, here is, is how that's going to happen. And how is it going to happen? Because Jesus will send another advocate, another advocate, not just an advocate, another one that will be there as Jesus was here. And that advocate is to be with them forever. It's not that he would be there for a time, as Jesus was. No, this is the final stage of our relationship with God, and the Spirit will be there. However, the Spirit itself um, really is the Spirit of truth. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I've mentioned to you before that in the Gospel of John, John uses words like truth uh, to talk about the nature of God. God is the truthful one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are to walk in the truth. The spirit who comes is the spirit of truth. So what the spirit will do will draw us to share in the life uh, of Jesus and thus in the life of the Father. So the point that I want to make here is that this second part of this first discourse is focusing on how we are drawn to share in the life of God. And just as because Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me, and therefore it is the Father who works through me, I think we can say that just as we are in Jesus and Jesus in us, it is Jesus who is working out through us. I think that's the message, the main message, that um, the historical critical people uh, would want us um, to receive. However, my own thoughts as I have reflected on that it is on the fact that it is Jesus who works through us. So often I think we can rely on our own ability, on the circumstances that we're in, and not realise that it is always Jesus who works through us. Sometimes Jesus works through us to actually bring about what Jesus wants, um, but sometimes we don't know that. I think we've all been in situations where we've done something and there's been an unintended consequence, unintended by us. But I'm suggesting that the Lord is working through us in ways that we do not appreciate. And we are all to be sharers of good news and we share the good news by being in the world so that Jesus can work through us to bring all people to share in that good news. So that's my own reflection um, on the Gospel. I'd like to invite you now to look at the Gospel and just see what you feel God is saying to you as uh, you read and reflect on this Gospel. Just take a few moments to do that. Welcome back. I invite you now to listen to the Gospel uh, for a second time in the light of what's been said um, and in the light of your own reflections. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. The all-pervading element that comes through to me in this, um, this gospel is the word love. That while I've explained the, the richness of the theology, it's all taking place within the context of love. That if we keep the Lord's commandments, that is the way uh, that we love him. And if we keep the commandments and love Jesus, then Jesus and the Father will come to me. And it means to me, something that's very important to me, that basically the journey to God is a journey of the heart. It's in the heart that we need to be transformed. Now that would express itself in all sorts of good Christian activity, in social justice, in eco-theology and all sorts of things. But a lot of those things can take place 
without coming from a heart in which Jesus and the Father and the Spirit actually live. So our focus initially, and it's initial, is to love Jesus. And out of that love will come the things that other people do, but that we will do them uh, out of love for Jesus, and we will bring Jesus to them, and we will bring to those situations the presence of the good news uh, for which we have been uh, missioned. I'd like you now to look at a text again. What is it that comes through to you personally um, in this gospel? Something that can be implemented in your life. I didn't actually say that what I meant to do with that love was just to look at my own activities and just see whether they come from the love that I mentioned. That was the point I was trying to make. But what is coming through to you? Take a minute to do that. Welcome back. We spent a moment now in prayer. Without me, you can do nothing. Lord, give us the strength, the courage that we need to implement in our lives what we have decided to do, so that the process of Lexio that begins in the text will fulfill its end in the transformation of our life. Welcome back and thank you for being with us here at the Centre for Christian Spirituality. We hope you'll join us next week as we reflect on the ascension of the Lord into heaven. Another short gospel, but a very rich gospel. But let us conclude our reflections on the sixth Sunday uh, Easter gospel uh, with the prayer from the liturgy. Grant, almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do through Christ our Lord.